One of my more popular videos on the channel was the insight that I gave into this home-based woodworking business. That was about nine months ago. I've got a little bit out of the habit of recording since I've been on holiday for two weeks. So I thought I'd, I'd get back into it by doing a part two of that. We're still, we're still in this space. Uh, we are still looking at, looking at moving, um, but that's not happened as quick as perhaps I thought it might. So I thought I'd, I'd show you a little bit more detail about how we do stuff here, our systems and processes, and just introduce you to a couple of the team members as well. Brady's making a bit of noise at the moment, so I'll take you up to the, the home office and uh, talk you through our processes and just show you a bit about what, uh, what Graham does. So Graham does a lot of our, our CAD drawing work. So here's the office with the board on that I showed in the last video. This shows you the current state of jobs. Uh, quite a few surveys booked in. Completed quotes, there's quite a bunch down there which mm, probably aren't going ahead. Um, a few on hold, which is a bit annoying, but then a fairly healthy number that have just pushed through to production planning. Uh, let me just start by um, showing you my work process um in fact before i do because i said i said i'd mention graham here's graham right next to me so here's <laughs> here's what he does and i'm going to show you a bit more of that in a minute um but this is this is how we work this is our little office here's my place that was graham's place this is camilla's slash allison's allison's my wife camilla does two days a week admin now we use a lot of google apps because we can share them across the team they work on the mobile and the desktop and they instantly update. So we have all of our documents on Google Drive. And this is an example of a Google Sheets document that I use and we go through um, when we're having a staff meeting, which is about 10 a.m. on Monday morning. This is just one insight into how I try and keep tabs on things. So these are the jobs that are current. We have a traffic light system. So if that's that was agreed to proceed, that's green. Um, over here there was just a bit of snagging so that's why it's still on the list once it's all green it gets deleted off the list this one just had a little bit of extra work to finish off after some flooring was to be fitted so that that red highlights that to me orange is in between orange means it's kind of in progress and half done so the curved shelves that you might have seen behind me in the workshop they've they're mostly done there's just they're, they're only primed they've got to be uh, top coated and then we move on to packaging them up making sure the drawings are in the box and making sure the the bird and the customer card are in the box so the bird is our little calling card which is part of the reason for our name free bird so every customer gets one of these i always used to make these myself but brady's taking that taking over making them customers love them they go on their shelves and uh, it's a nice little personal touch that they always seem to appreciate So this is how I, I keep keep tabs on where stuff's at. Um, if it's white, it's just we really haven't really got to it yet. So going into more detail per job, well, let's see now. If I show you Service Mate, so Service Mate is an app that runs on the phone. I take it with me on site, and you can access it on the computer. But this just gives you one insight into how you can see where jobs are distributed, which ones are at the quote stage, which ones are at the work order stage. Actually, a lot, lots of these are work order, they're just grouped together. Um, this is the job spec sheet, which we have for each job. So it's Google Sheets document, based on a template. Uh, it's where we put all the information that is needed, apart from the drawings, all the information for ordering parts and correctly manufacturing it. So from experience of um, misunderstandings coming in, we had we well graham created this template where it's color coded and it helps you just to quickly see if something's a standard style or non-standard standard paint or non-standard so the color helps you to quickly notice that now that syncs with an ipad that brady has down in the workshop so we've moved although we still use some paper we've moved away from paper for this particular thing because it can also update down to the workshop once i go down there i'll show you that so here we have the 
different components. Um, and for example, the order code for the handles, quantity, and then whether it's already packed in the job box, which is just a cardboard box uh, with a job name on, or whether it still needs to be allocated, etc. So that helps us keep track of things. I've shown you bits of SketchUp drawing before. I thought it'd be interesting to show you a particular one that is in the van ready to pack because I can talk a bit through the process. So that was the job spec sheet for that project. This was the drawing that was produced at the customer's house in front of them, which is the process we use for alcove jobs. Um, another, another drawing, just using layers and views in SketchUp. We're able to show the dimensions, get it all signed off by the customer. Decisions are made early on, and then once the customer says, yes, we do want to go ahead, we're ready to push the button. So a job like this, I'm done and dusted with it once I've left the customer's house, and then I hand it over to Graham. So Graham, do you want to just bring up the cutting list for that one? Yeah, so something I can't show you on my Mac is the, the cut list export. Um, the drawing that we've got there is is made up of components that are cut list ready. So even the scribing allowance on the ends of those chunky shelf parts are embedded in the software. So when it outputs, they are 20 millimeters longer than the drawn length. You see, a lot of this is Graham's expertise. I've handed that over now. So what it showed you just there was the four sides of the part. And if it had a zero, it was to size. And if it had an S, it was a scribe added. Um, so, that then is printed, and I'll show you that in the workshop. Those those get printed out. Those are all the layouts on your eight by four sheets. Um, and while we're up here, you're just detailing up some doors for CNC, aren't you, Graham? Yep. Yeah. So this is this is the job we're doing there. So a few tall units and some low ones. I think it's fourteen doors. Um, so if you've watched our CNC door production series, you'll know a little bit about this. Um, the way we output that, we're not outputting this via cut list, although you can, you can do that. If you're making five piece doors, the software will do that. But for the CNC solid panel doors, Graham's come up with a dynamic component that he's programmed. Oh yes, there's your dialog box. So if you, if you type in a different size there, this whole thing will readjust, but the rebate size will stay the same. The um, 35 millimeter okay. cup holes will move. Additional hinge. Oh, right, you can add an additional hinge. Yeah, yeah so as you, as you can see, I mean, we are at the stage in the business where a lot's delegated, so Graham's able to, to do a lot of this stuff, and I, I'm not entirely sure how he does all of it now, because I've handed it over, which is good, I think. Um, same with Brady, he just gets on with the making. So whereas, whereas for general parts, the nesting is done by the cabinet, sorry, the, the cut list software as an export from the cabinet sense plugin in SketchUp, uh, for these doors, Graham's manually nesting them because of how we have to draw them in detail for, for the um, CNC manufacturer, he's manually nesting them there. So we've got a whole bunch of 22 millimeter boards and we're using nine millimeter for the panels, which drop into the doors. Um, Anything else worth showing about our method, you think, Graham? Mm, I think that's enough for now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. All right. Right, we'll go back down to Brady. Well, he's, he's taken that, uh, that curved unit you got a glimpse of. I asked him to take it off because I'm going to make another little video showing you how that goes together. So here's just a little taster of it. Can I just stop that for a bit while I'm talking? Cheers. Yeah, so Brady's working on uh, some doors here. So this is a big part of Brady's work is the making, sanding, shaping and painting of MDF parts. So these doors, Brady, these weren't CNC manufactured, were they? Because they didn't make very efficient use of the, the board. So do you want to just talk through briefly how you made these doors? So I started by running styles and rails off at 75 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Then once I've done that, I like to sand 
quickly just the inner edge then the outer edge just before I've assembled the door then yeah. I will set up the router with we have an adjustable cutter which has two cutters and you can undo the bolt and you can shimmy it up so and that's the Wielding it. Tools one, isn't it? That cutter, yeah, it as recommended mm. by Peter Millard, as it yeah. happens. So you can you can get really really uh, exact grooves. Yeah. Uh, so did that. Then put my panels, mm -hmm. rails. I put one domino in the rails and styles, one tight domino and one loose, so I could adjust and get everything nice and square. Because we've sometimes had issues, haven't we, with the squareness of these doors, yeah. which is one reason why I, I do like doing them by CNC. But uh, just through trial and error, Brady's finding the method that gives him a good, the strong joint. Now that we're using the domino jointer, that just enough kind of play to square things up if it's not lining up as it should. And then just gluing two doors up at a time because we only have four of these clamps. And are you still using yeah. these? Um, these things that I showed in a video ages ago, these squaring yeah, jigs. When, uh, door, but what I'm finding is that you don't get enough pressure uh, on the joints to get a, a nice seamless joint. So mm -hmm. if you look where the uh, where the rail and styles are joined, you, you actually can't see any any joint at all. There's no yeah. point to this. I'm just seeing a a shiny line yeah. where that denib surface yeah. has been rubbed or something, aren't I? That is very smooth, actually. That's the that's the denib primer, denib, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I found with our jigs is you just can't get that that pressure. I see. To close that gap up really, really tight. Because we were clamping just with wedges, weren't we? Yeah, it's just wedges, and it starts to lift up, and then you fight in it. So. Okay. This metal works really well, and yeah. then you can stand them up on edge. If you uh, fire the clamps, oh, that once you've once you've clamped your door up, you just mm -hmm. stand it like that on the floor until it dries. So that's better for space. Spare for space, yeah. Yeah, because we do find with doors that they can be a bit of a time drain and a space problem. So uh, when it comes to your really tall wardrobe doors, I do like getting them made CNC from a solid piece because then we're not taking up the space in the workshop for too long. Plus, you've got all the flatness and squareness benefits. Uh, do you want to just show us the, the sort of cut lists that you get? Because I've been showing them up in the office. If we see the printouts. Have you got the Smith ones there? Just because yeah. that was the one we were looking at. So, once Graham's designed something, he'll just bring me this cut list down mm -hmm. and I'll work through. So this is actually, this is a second job in the same house. It's actually a different one to what I was showing, but uh, this is birch ply, but we also had a painted MDF job. Um, well, it's all grouped together, isn't it? Because yeah. those will be, yeah, they'll be the MDF it shelves. Shows, yeah. And that's, I try to, rather than keep resetting the saw before I uh, just go in all gun ho and start cutting, I'll check mm -hmm. the cut list and see. Right, so there you've got a, the shelf which is 220 in, in width same as there mm -hmm. so go through check it make sure once i've set the saw i've cut everything at that width so i'm not okay. resetting the saw and having to come back yeah uh, you can't always do that but yeah and we're not working with the most accurate of tools are we so i think um it's quite good once you've set something and you know things need to be exactly the same width if you just run them all through the same then you know for sure because we're just offering we're just offering the tape measure up between here and there to check our distance because i wouldn't really trust this scale and it's only in inches anyway yeah okay um do you want to just open up the van and show us the stuff that's packed in because that's all that's all this job so there's a bit of continuity then We've got the alcoves the alcoves i showed on the computer this sort of box room storage thing in birch ply and we've got that all packed ready for me to install with Graham's help tomorrow. 
And that's the benefit of this big van. That's why I went for this big van over a transit is that we were finding we had jobs we could get fitted in a day, but we couldn't get them into the van in one go when we had the transit van. So we, uh, we moved to this big VW Crafter. Something else I mentioned was the, uh, the jobs parts box. Now that's, that's in there. So very simple system. We just have a bunch of cardboard boxes, the ones that we receive deliveries in. We label them up with the job name and then based on the job spec sheet, which is the Google, the Google Sheets, I just remember a couple of things. The Google Sheets document that I showed you earlier, Brady's checking that off and dropping all the various components that we need in the box in advance of the install. So then it's ready just to grab. And of course the, the drawings, drawings need to go in and there's a specific type of drawing that we have which Graham prepares for the installation. So those, those height lines are to the internal battens of the shelves. So I can very quickly just fit all the battens and know that I can crack on and get everything fitted. Now I mentioned the iPad that's used down in the workshop kind of shared with my daughter Abby so we got a tough case in a bright colour for her but this in the daytime lives down in the workshop and um, I've just sort of stripped it back to on this page the apps that Brady needs so he can check the calendar, he can check the service mate app um, he can go to Sheets, so I'm just going to bring that up, but look away so I don't give away loads of customer names. Yeah, so you can bring up the Smith job spec sheet. Of course, we've got Wi-Fi down here, thanks to this TP-Link extender that extends the Wi-Fi through the power network. And here's a job spec sheet, exactly the same thing that I had up on the desktop. And if I was to update something here, it would immediately be updated on the desktop. So it means that Graham and Brady are on the same page with stuff. And the theory is that this shouldn't, the job shouldn't go out the door without all of these being green, because green means that it's all made and ready and packed. Another little app I wanted to show you on here is, is Google Hangouts. So it's another Google product which works well for Teams. We don't pay for any of this. We just have separate Google accounts. Um, yeah, so Hangouts, let me just show you something appropriate. Um, right, yeah, so this is just how I communicate with the team. So maybe I'm out on site and an issue comes up. I go to Hangouts, I've got it on my phone, it's just like a little messaging app, and it'll pop up on the iPad and alert Brady, and it will alert, say, Graham on his desktop, depending on which particular chat we're in. So I've set up different chats depending on who I want to see different things. So. A uh, great example, I've just found a way of hanging doors for spraying. I've sent the link to Brady, see what he thinks. And then I've been on site giving a customer a bird and noticed a burn mark around it. So I've just fed that back to him. And then he's fed back to me his response on both those things. So that works brilliantly. And all these little tools, they all help with communication. Because the one of the biggest challenges that I've found going from just me making stuff to having a team is communication. So you you have to get over this hump as you grow the business, where you feel like you're spending twice as long for the luxury of having stuff that of course you're paying. So your costs have gone up, and you're spending longer to communicate how things need to be done and to fix mistakes, and that's normal. It's a normal part of the process. So we have had to just push on through accept the cost in, in the, the, the hope of the future payback. And it is quite nice to realise that we, we now have this team where people understand how stuff's done and anything that's still a little bit of a work in progress, we've set up these methods of quick communication and feedback so that we can continue to improve and we can catch mistakes when they come. And we probably weekly we have uh, discussions, disagreements um, about how stuff should be done. At least that's how it works here. I don't have a great deal of experience, well, I don't have any experience really in any other workshop. And I'm sure there's lots we're doing that we could do much better and much more efficiently. But we do at least have quite a small team of people that are increasingly good at what they do. And it is starting to work out um, and starting to equate to profit just about. Um, so with a bit of luck, perhaps next time I do an update of this sort, perhaps we'll be in a new premises 
um, because now that we are starting to be a little bit above break even on our jobs, it starts to become possible that we could we could think about affording the rent of a new place. Um, so I will keep you updated on that, um, but no promises. Well, I think that's about all I wanted to cover. So thanks for watching. Uh, do ask questions below. I'm slightly hesitating to say that because I think there might be a lot of questions about the systems we use and stuff. Um, but far away and I'll answer as soon as I can. And uh, I think I'm going to crack on and make another video about this curves unit. I think we'll reassemble it for you and just show you how that's gone together. Okay, see you next time.